Tower Fantasy release date has been teased a while ago by the Morse Code Gang saying it will be on 11 August while the Apple App Store stated weeks ago it will be on 11 August as well. But this hasn't been officially confirmed by the official yet but uh, the chances of this being right might be very high. It cannot be a coincidence. With the game coming soon, I guess with majority of my community will be staying as an F2P or a Dolphin. So in these videos, I want to talk about which SSR characters and weapons you should be saving for. Do keep in mind that this is my own personal thoughts, so maybe other content creators might have their own point as well. First, allow me to introduce myself. First, my name is Zaki, also known as Master Pendragon. I stream Tower of Fantasy on YouTube. I am more of a PvP and battle royal person in Tower of Fantasy. I'm from Malaysia, so I will be a content creator on the Southeast Asia server, living in the community there, which is the best server for Philippines, Indonesia, Singapore, Vietnam, Cambodia, Thailand, Brunei, Australia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and India. So if you're there, hope we can be friends, because I might just start a clan. Before we get into our main topic, I would like to thank Ida Cafe for making a website for all the information and English translation to the game. Kudos to you guys who has been helping players from the CN server, as well as many content creators out there. I really do appreciate your effort. Okay, we will be going through from standard banner first, followed by the future upcoming banner. I will give a brief pros and cons about each of his character as well as weapons, but I will make an individual videos for each of them for combos, build, matrices, and basically what weapons to build along with them. But first, we have to understand the basic of weapons. But you're welcome to skip to this timestamp if you already know, perhaps you've already played the beta, perhaps you're already on the CN server, but you can stick around just in case there are might be things that you haven't known yet. Like my sensei once told me, in order to become a pro, you must understand the basic first. In Tower of Fantasy, you pull for weapons and it comes along with character. They both come together and characters are just basically skins or you could put it cosmetic, while weapons are a little bit complicated, which I will explain in a bit. The standard banner has a spark system at 80 pool, which always guarantees you a random SSR character. The spark system does not reset even before you hit the 80 pools. However, in the CN server, if you're starting as a new player, you will get an SSR on your first 30 pool. Each time you summon, you will be given a golden token which you can redeem for ascension material, but we don't do that here. If you have 120 tokens, you can redeem for another copy of that weapon to ascend their rarity. Or in Genshin terms, constellation. You can only redeem the weapons you have gotten from the gacha to summarize. You need at least one copy of that weapon first before you can redeem it with 120 golden tokens. The limited banner is a little bit different. The PD system will be at 80 pool, the chances are always 50-50, and just like the standard banner, your PD does not get reset if you get an SSR before hitting the PD. You get a rate token for every pool and if you hit 120 pools, you can redeem for the rate up weapon using 120 rate tokens. In the China server, characters like Claudia, Cobalt B, and even Nemesis will get added into the standard banner, which means in the future, you might just need to pull for one of the copy of that weapon during its readout and try to get 120 gold tokens to redeem them at the standard banner for dupes. Of course, it might take some time before they get their rerun first, and then a few more months, and then they'll get added to the token redemption. But do keep in mind limited characters like Ling Long collab Mark Bayuki as well as Ling that's the reason the reason 2.0 character are limited character and limited character will not be added to the standard manner. Now let's talk more about weapons shall we. Every weapon has a different fighting style ranging from basic attack, aerial attack, dash attack, charge attack, and ultimate attack. Let's take a look at this little picture here from Ida Cafe's edit. Here's an example of Mario's weapon. It's an ice element. There are currently five. There are currently five elements as of now in the China server, which is physical, fire, wall, which is thunder, ice, and hybrid, which is Ling. They also have a resonance they belong to. There is a DPS, defense, and healer. They're not really called defense, and they're not really called healer, but they're called support in global, but I'm gonna refer to them as healer. By following different resonance, it will grant you different passive buff. In order to follow a resonance, for example, DPS, you must equip two weapons that falls under the resonance DPS class. I will make a separate videos for the element as well as resonance because that might why not end up too long. Last but not least, each weapon has a shatter rate which shows you how fast you could break an opponent's shield. Breaking their shield will leave them stunned for a period of time. We also have charge rate which helps you charge up your ultimate or switch attack much faster. Now character will have a bond system. I thought I'd throw this in because what, since we pull for weapon, we also get the character. At certain level, it will grant you some passive buff for your weapon, but I will talk about this in character-specific videos. Now that the basic of understanding weapon has been cleared, 
Let's start with our very first character. Let's start off with Zero, shall we? Zero is a fire element as well as a healer. He has a cube as a weapon, but that cube looks kinda sus. But he attacks with his, well, um, plasma punch, I guess. He wears a glove, but it produces a plasma energy. See these little fireballs around me? They actually help do damage, and if I go near to the enemy, it's gonna try to hit them and then disappear. There's a way to generate them again, but that's for an individual videos. Yeah, let's go, let's go. But your boy only starts healing when you ascend him to one star. So in short, he only starts healing if you pull two copy of his weapon. But that's okay. If you pull for another 120 tokens, you can redeem another copy of his weapon from the shop. He's pretty useful in PvE pairing together with Coco, which is also a hero that can spam healing. Zero healing increases the higher your attack stat is. His combats are very simple and not too flashy. He has a pretty cute dash, but it is kind of slow and that is kind of risky. It doesn't have a lot of mobility and in PvP, well, let's just say healing is not ideal. At least I haven't encountered anyone who uses zeros against me. In short, his combat is 5 over 10 and you need to copy of him to start healing. So if you're an F2P, don't worry about it. If you get him, just pray that you'll get spooked by him again in the future and then you're good, you're a healer now. Subasa has a pretty thick personality. Her weapon is a bow, she's an ice element, and her resonance is DPS. She has a pretty high charge rate for ultimates, and by far she is the best F2P DPS in my opinion. Aside from using a bow as a range, every player has 3 dodge, but not Subasa. Now the top tier thing to do with Subasa is her dodge attack. You dodge an attack which fires 3 arrows, but in close range, if all that arrows hit, you get a higher chance of frostbitten someone, meaning freezing someone, and if you break that freeze, you will deal more damage towards someone. You have 3 dodge attack, but her primary skill is piercing arrow, which is a lot, which allows her to do a backflip, which is kind of equal willing to a dodge, and fires another 3 arrow as well. Her ultimate is just a shower of ice rain, pretty useful for damage over time, and whenever your opponent is out of dodge, in PvP, you can just you know trap them in that little thing over there. I use Tsubasa a lot in the battle royale as well as PvP. She is by far, if I had to rank her during upon launch, she would be an S tier but soon clouded by other character which leaves her down to A tier. Aside from being bondage in 2.0, Sarmir is actually quite a decent character. Many people use her as a helicopter to stay on top of enemy while doing damage, but it does consume stamina and I really don't like arrow attack because well, it consumes stamina and you have to swap into a weapon of charge and stuff like that, but that's not what we're here to talk about. Her skill deals at constant AoE damage for a period of time, but what's great about her is that her ultimate actually removes any debuff on its wielder, very, very useful for future boss fight. Ah, Mario. Her great sword, Rosy Edge, is by far a very great design, I really love it. Mario also has the best 3 star outfit in my opinion, but of course that is subjective. Nothing can go wrong for having Mario at the start or especially you're an F2P. She has the highest shatter rate combined with her charge attack which is a tornado spinning attack, meaning even though you might not be aware with high DPS, you can still be very useful in breaking enemy's shield. Mario falls in the ice element as well as the defense resonance. Her primary skill gives you a range slash and her ultimate knocks every enemy within it. She is the best when it comes to PvE, very friendly, very useful for F2P, but for ranked PvP, you might need to wait for a little circle to, to become smaller. You can still use the ultimate as a shield as well, but uh, you know, it will not do damage, but you can use it as a shield and then try to fire the slash when you're inside the shield. Mario by far is an S tier for me when it comes to PvE, but when it comes to PvP, I would rank her around B or just B+. King is a character that I truly underestimated, falling under DPS and flame element, and flame elements allows you to uh, allows allows you to burn enemy with damage over time. This lone shark bad boy excels in aerial attack, followed by a combo from his skills. His ultimate is a little bit underwhelming, but that's okay because he's good at aerial attack. So just in my opinion, you may you may find a way to use his ultimate, but I don't find his ultimate anywhere useful just, just 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 look at that now it's very underwhelming it's just a little bit of pool of lava so you want to do her, his aerial attack and let it let him do the iframe first and when the iframe finish just trigger the skill king is by far i would put him around a tier b plus or a tier he's very useful in pvp and very useful in pvp as well crow or rather karasuma for global is again another aerial attack bad boy 
He uses a dual wielding blade, falls in DPS resonance and under the world element which is thunder. His skills and ultimate should be used together to trigger a hell spike or spinning attack, but if I have to compare him and King, King has the better area attack due to having an iframe, and Karasuma area attack which has spent a lot of his stamina and by the time you don't have stamina, people just might finish you off. Ateno Yushahuma is another excellent character for F2P, especially in PvP. She holds a shield weapon which changes into an axe upon activating her skill. This changes her fighting style, but we're not here to talk about that. What's great about her is her shield dash. Every time you do a dash attack, it stuns your enemy as well as your opponent in PvP, and by holding your attack button in shield mode allows her to hold a shielding position. To use her effectively, you will want to build her tank resonance. I use Huma a lot in Battle Royale and she is indeed a very great stun and one you manage to stun people, I just often do this little spinning attack right here. Coco Reader is voiced by the VA of Nezuko. She is a support healer under the element Ice. One thing great about her ultimate is that she removes all debuff and heal herself as well as allies as well. Her skill allows her to produce healing zone following the wielder and anyone who stands inside the zone. Just like Zero, building her attack will provide more healing, however for Zero case, Zero attack will not support his healing that much but uh, Coco Reader will actually benefit more. She heals way more than Zero. Now I do not have Shiro so I cannot talk about her but I did use her weapon in the battle royale mode but not as much as because she is not the meta right there. Shiro is a ranged type using Chakram as her weapon. She's a physical type and falls under DPS resonance. She has a very low shatter as well as charge, and you can see from here she's not the best. Her skill is just this little thing that most people can just walk out from, so it's best for PvE. I honestly have never seen her ultimate, so let's go watch it. Oh, well, I guess that's okay. Claudia definitely reminds me a little bit of Bishamon and Xtaf. This badass girl wields a katana as a weapon called the Gurren Blade. Very cool name. I do not have this character but I have played her a number of times in the battle royale and she is a must to go. If you plan to main physical build, her ultimate is kind of disappointing but it does remove power from the builder. But the great thing about her is her basic attack, area attack as well as her skill attack. But sometimes it doesn't hit the middle so I tend to stand there when people do their, you know, claw that shit. The great thing about her is that she has a very pretty low cooldown for her, primary, uh, for her skills, so that's the ideal thing about her. You got some, a little bit of iframe, people can target you, cover a wide area of AoE. For me, in my opinion, Claudia is decent, I would put her around B for both PvP as well as PvE. Cobalt B is another wonderful character, again I do not have her but I have played her almost every time in the battle every time I got a chance to pick up her weapon. You can charge with her weapon up to 5 bar and do more damage, her basic attack and aerial attack is well, an okay great, but I like to use her ultimate. She literally shoots out a barrage of flame and yes, she is a DPS and, and flame so she can burn your enemy very easily. Her skill attack shoots uh, yeah, that thing, a little bit of radius right there, but the great thing about it is that you can actually move around while executing it. Cobalt B is strong in skills and ultimate, and actually she's quite decent in PvP. Uh, I think I can put her around B plus and A as well, because well, in the future there's gonna be stronger character than her. Coming up next is Bai and Mark, which is a limited collab character from Ling Long Cage. In the China server, they have had their rerun, however, according to Dida Manor from the global, not official yet, they might not come to global but I will talk about them anyways. Let's start off with our Lady Bai first, Bayuki. I have to say, I love her weapon design a lot but she is a pretty terrible basic attack, aerial attack as well as dash attack. Her charge attack is kind of flashy so I forgive her. Her skill attack is also okay but if the target is small or a player you can kinda just choke them and just charge toward them and slam them but uh, if the target is big, not, uh, not much of the damage will be dealt. Most players only use her ultimate which is the giant sword summon on around your enemy, pretty similar to a lot of people say, it's pretty similar to Red and Shogun, it deals continuous damage and upon reaching its limit, it will explode and do pretty good damage. So if you want to have Bai in your team, then you're gonna have two other weapons as your basic aerial or some sort of attack. Daddy Mark is my best friend's boss's favorite, he's a tank and physical and his weapon is basically a handgun and a knife, but upon activating his skills, it calls upon his mecha suit which is pretty pretty strong which change his gameplay, change his skill set, change his everything, provide him armor as well. There is no cooldown to how long you can use this suit, 
Holding the attack button would allow you to shoot projectile missiles into a third person's perspective, and he now has a reuse sword, and his dive attack is what most people do, but it does consume a lot of stamina, but again, after switching to that, you can actually activate your skill again to do another dive attack, and just somehow it will summon a Thanos weapon, which is pretty sick. His ultimate is Missile Barrage upon switching weapon, and after if you switch it from another weapon to a marked weapon, you will immediately jump into the suit. Now this weapon was told that it's ideal to counter against characters like Lin, but I haven't tried yet. Mark indeed is an S tier for me, no doubt about it, but it could be around A plus or S tier. I haven't used him a lot, so I apologize for not using him a lot. Nemesis is a wonderful girl, she is very sweet, she is the best sister you can ever have. She falls under the world element as well as the support, meaning healer resonance. Now she is a ranged attacker using a some sort of a plasma beam, but every time she, every time she dashes, you can see that she produces a radius very similar to Coco Reiter, but actually wider, which actually heals him as well as your comrade. Now I'm not really fond of her, I did not use her a lot, but I have been seeing people use her against me, and she was able to uh, slow my freak down, and I wasn't able to do a lot of damage or even dash around. So Nemesis is actually quite a decent character. She has heal, she has slow. Um, how to put it? From my thoughts and my experience, I would rate her a B plus or an A. But since I don't have much of an experience and people might rage at me, I put her at A. Mama Freak is the ass you see at the start of the game. There's nothing good about her except her infinite dash and judgment cut. Trust me, I used her since she is released, she's still in my team, she's my main. When using her skill, she will produce this little ice field right here after a certain, you know, when she does that, she also has an iframe. Huh? Don't, I hope I don't forget to mention it. In the ice field, you can keep rock man dashing and it will never consume a dash bar unless the field is gone. It does not work on other weapon, but this allows her dash attack to come in handy. Just look at that dash attack. Fuyo! Her ultimate attack is underwhelming, but if you wish to charge toward a target, yeah, it's actually quite useful, but it doesn't deal a lot of damage. The only way to stop her infinite dash is with characters like Nemesis or Ruby, which can slow her down. And once you're slowed down, your dash is kind of predictable and you can actually be finished off as your judgment cut will not be as fast as it seems. In my opinion, when it comes to mobility and PvE, I would rate her at S tier, but when it comes to PvP, it depends on who you face and your opponent's arsenal, but I would put her around B plus or A. Everyone's little favorite girl. Ruby by far has the best design and is the most adorable girl. They had an entire PvE celebrating even her birthday. Ruby falls under the fire element as well as DPS. She has two weapons actually, which is her flying stand named Sparkle, as well as the doll she's holding named Dolly. When equipped with two or more flame weapon, Ruby increased flame attack by 20%. So if you want to use her, you have to be a fire main. You have to at least have two flame weapons. You can Kamehameha wave with Spark and the ultimate is actually another Kamehameha. Exp you can call it Super Kamehameha, I guess. Ruby's skill allows her to slow their opponent and that slow actually follows towards your opponent. Her dash attack allows her to throw Dolly at the enemy and every time she throws Dolly, she has an increase, uh, increase in the fire element by, if I'm not mistaken, 20%. So the enemy will be focusing on Dolly instead of you. Ruby is a wonderful DPS, I really like her and, in, and with the ability to slow, it is very useful and I highly highly recommend that you pick her up. Not just because she's the best character, but also because she can slow people down. Saki Fuwa is one of the most interesting characters of all time. She is the only character that changes her skill if you follow different resonance. If you follow DPS, her primary attack will be a dash return strike, her charge attack will be a Beyblade spin. But if you build her defense or support resonance, her charge attack will be a medic to pull as well as her skill attack. In my opinion, she is better as an attacker. Her ultimate is a target lock on, but however, can most of the time miss. But if landed, very powerful. Just like Ruby, Saki Fuwa, you also need to have at least two ice weapon because that will also increase your ice weapon's attack. I think by the same percentage as Ruby. I forgot it, but here's it is on the screen. She is very flashy and I, it's very fun and I highly recommend to save for Saki Fuwa as well. If you're going to main ice type, I highly recommend getting Saki Fuwa. I will rate her PvE and PvP S. Last but not least, 
we have Ling or Ling Ye. <sighs> she is literally god. She falls under the resonant DPS and the element hybrid as a temporary name I call. Her element will follow whichever element your other two weapon is. However, instead wise, the weapon will only follow the highest element stat. You can take a look at that. I actually have ice higher. The hybrid element just follows my, my ice element stat. You can see that they're actually in the same number. Now Link's skill allows her to hover in the air by producing the same logical field as Freak. They have a little field and then you can actually jump around and fly around there, which is very, very useful. She is very useful for boss fight as you can stay on top and start healing with some sort of uh, matrixes. And even in PvP, everyone is just literally using her and I haven't found a way to counter. I'm still looking for a way. My best way was just grappling and my last bet was maybe practicing Mark a little bit more. Ling is a must-have on your team, especially she can just follow any element you want her to. So she's very flexible, she's be water. That is currently the character we have now on China Tower of Fantasy as of this video. The upcoming character will be Lyra followed by Tian Lang, who hasn't been given a English name yet. I wish I can talk more about each of these characters in specific, but I will make a separate video for all of them in terms of build, matrices, combos, and what weapon to pair them with. Thank you so much for watching till this point. If you want to see more Tower Fantasy Guide, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. I'm Master Pernicon and I will be a little bit more busy focusing on Tower Fantasy basic content and streaming it, and I will let go of other contents while Tower Fantasy is my main focus now. With that said, I am Master Pendragon and Ace just a gaming channel.